Welcome back to the channel. This is Lab Tools. Today I'm going to talk again a lot on this video. There's no demonstration in this video, just a lot of information. So if you don't want to watch boring videos, you can close the window now. But I want you to watch it because I know a lot of guys ask this question and I just wanted to answer in one video. So uh, what the question was, do I need multiple shape of old blade so that I can fit into my pricking iron. My basic answer is no. Uh, you don't necessarily need to buy European pricking iron or oil or Japanese diamond pricking iron oil. Just need to um, shape your iron slightly differently or you can go with a one oil as well. It doesn't really matter much. So let's go into details. Uh, I will just try to show you the picture first. Uh, what, what, what's the um, issue here? So we're not talking about the old types of pricking irons or the thoning types. We're talking about Japanese and European pricking iron types. So if you buy pricking iron, you have noticed that your teeth are diamond shaped like this one. Yeah. So if you can use, you see closely, I'll show you. Yeah, your teeth are diamond shaped, right? In the in diagonal way, right? That is called Japanese type. So what these are for is that you can just leave the marks or you can just penetrate fully the leather so that your leather is um, ready to be stitched. Yeah. If you buy European style pricking iron, it will have more of a slit. So the holes are, it's not really a hole, it's a slit. This is more like a diamond hole. And it's not so diamond shaped as well. It's, it, sometimes it can be like the rice grain look. This is more slit, but it is. Um, it, it is. It's just a. It really helps in how to stitch looks like. Yeah. You know? So the question is, do I need to flatten my uh, my oil to fit into French iron type? Um, the answer is no. Like I said in the beginning, you don't need to. Uh, all you need to do is just to sh just to shape the diamond into more of a flat towards the tip. Yeah. You know? I already made a video about how to sharpen your oil, so if you haven't watched this, please watch the video on how to shaping your oil. I'll put the link over here. So basically, I will show you um, before and after. So because the, the the size of the handle is different, but then the old oil size was the same, similar, uh, and it worn down quite a bit as I shape it. It it took it, it, it got shorter and shorter. So I'll just show you. Yeah, so this is what the old, my, my, on the right hand, this is for um, European pricking iron. Yeah. Become very narrow and sharp towards the tip. Like this. From, from this diamond shape, yeah. So you just need to shape it very thin and narrow, very very thin. And maybe the width you want to adjust it because if you are um, stitching very thin leather with a very small stitching holes, then you might need to adjust your width of your oil so that you don't rip your leather apart. Okay, so that that might be matter, but uh, not. Not other things, yeah. So, this is what it looks like, yeah. So, this big oil is just to demonstrate or talk about how I should, um, you should sharpen it again. If I explain this video, so it has four sides, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, you can maybe possible to shape it very flat. Shape it very flat, sharpen it very flat, and also this side flat and this side flat. So you will have a perfect diamond shaped sharp oil in your hand. That could work for your Japanese pricking iron, but if you want to use it for a European pricking iron, you might want to smooth it down on the center of the blade, here, center, where the high peaks are. Yeah? Smooth it down, smooth it down. You don't have to do it up here. You don't. It doesn't necessarily have to be flat bar up to here. 
it's a need to gradually stiff and normal up here. Yeah. Also this side of course, flat, 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 and then it goes back to normal. So it, it kind of gives you a, a look of this very gradual taper toward the edge where you have a flatness but also have a strength because you have a meat in the middle so it doesn't really bend or it doesn't break while you're using your oil. Uh, leather is very um, stretchy and very movable material. Uh, leather doesn't necessarily have to be um, exactly the same shape you want for it to penetrate the leather uh, to, to, to your needs. So what I mean is that even though this is not a slit of a, of a, of a shape, when it goes through this material, this will show it's um, very show you, I'll show you. So like I show you in the video, the blade is not really um, like flat flat, you know what I mean? And then if I penetrate this object leather, it will give you very slit hole like this right even though my all is not a slit so be aware that your all needs to be a little bit stronger so don't make it too thin uh, make it taper like this and then you just sharpen it very well and then you can just make your um, all uh, very penetrable to your leather and leaves a clean hole like this but if you're using Japanese pricking iron, you may be want to leave more of a um, peaks. Yeah? These peaks more protrude so that you can align your holes much easier to your hole plans that you have put on with your Japanese dot types. But you can also just use this um, European styled iron um, oil to match the point here, just penetrate the hole in one by one and that still gives you nice looking Japanese stitching as well. So don't go crazy over the shape of the oil that you are um, you're having. You don't necessarily need to buy um, flat type oil for European and diamond type for Japanese pricking iron. Just to shape it a little bit, you will do the both. Yeah. If you are interested into uh, this is for my big work, um, heavy duty work. This is normally used for saddlery, but I use it for different purposes. It is a um, French made blade, vintage one, and the handle I restored it. Um, it's very old. Um, it's it's very nice oil. I, I will use this um, in the future oftentimes. So if you're wondering, this is just a vintage one. Uh, no brand or makers here. Yeah. And these two are Blanchard. If you are looking for Nas oil, uh, Blanchard uh, makes great oil as well. I recommend it uh, from Blanchard. Um, it's, it's quite quite nice to uh, see makers made of boxwood um, for um, leather craft tools. Uh, boxwood is really good for um, oil handles. So Blanchard uh, makes great one. Blanchard also makes great blade. Other makers, they're also okay. Maybe uh, one of the makers, other makers that I heard about Japanese ones are great as well they have a softer blade so you you might want to leave a lot more thickness than your European blades um, leave more meat to your steel for your Japanese oil blades otherwise it will bend um, so the, the steel is nice but then they're a little soft so these are very very hard steels so uh, it will not as bend as the the Japanese ones yeah if I have a new blade or if I have a new makers that pops up and um, brings me interest, I will do uh, make separate video. And uh, but normally I I wouldn't I think I think oils oils are oils, they may be a little prettier. Okada makes really pretty oils and uh, the the premium handles it's it's really nice it's uh, pretty to look at, but for your leather craft, uh, you can just concentrate on your. Uh, workpiece. Uh, I think old blades are uh, nothing that you nothing that you want to pay premium price for quality result. Yeah, I think it's Blanchard blades are all cool. Yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. As always, I will see you guys next video. Bye bye.